motorcyclists. We're called many different things by many different people. Sometimes it's organ donor, adrenaline junkie, idiots, rebels, morons. These are limited number of things that cagers actually call some of us while we're out there. They call us out on social media how stupid we are, but they simply do not understand who we really are. We are really fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. We have people at home waiting for us just as much as they have waiting for them as well. So when it comes to motorcycling, it is something of an importance to not only have a great bike, but to also have great gear to go with that. Because what's more important than keeping your body safe when others around you simply call you an organ donor? So let's take a look at the gear of motorcycling and let's talk about how to stay safe while out there riding. So motorcycle gear, isn't that just a jacket, a long sleeve shirt, a pair of pants, uh, just something I can wear every day? No. Motorcycle apparel is different from many different things. It's made of fabrics and materials that are slide resistant, abrasion resistant, sometimes puncture resistant even, depending on the way it's built. Motorcycle jackets, jackets are also generally armored. They're also generally going to be protecting and have vents and everything else that's not designed into everyday clothing. So that way you can keep cool while you're riding. That way you can have airflow and other protection as well. The pants as well. Most jeans only survive less than a second at a slide, especially at 70 miles an hour. They're not going to last even a second as you slide through um, an accident. And you're going to lose that and you're going to lose that protection. So you want to have a pair of pants that's designed for that slide as well. You want to dress for the slide, not the ride. Or it's better to sweat than to bleed. And that is the honest truth. Now, when it comes to motorcycle accidents, we're gonna talk about non-fatal ones today and where the most injuries occur. So with this chart from Law Tigers, let's take a look at some of those accidents and some of those injuries. So when it comes to non-fatal motorcycle injuries, the first and most hit area is gonna be your foot and your legs. And that's because in a low slide or a high slide or any of those, you're gonna usually take most of the impact or the weight of the motorcycle or the weight of your body or the tumble or anything of that nature on those components. So you wanna make sure that you have a good sturdy over the ankle boot, closed toe shoe. You don't wanna be a squid wearing sandals and shorts. You wanna have good abrasion resistance pants. You wanna have the pants that can have the armor in them if you want it. You're gonna have want the pants that can slide. You wanna have the boots that can take that damage as well. And that keeps your ankle sturdy, that keeps your knee protected, that keeps your legs protected from the slide. You want good stuff like that. The next area is of course head and neck. A helmet is extremely important. It's one of the things I've never not worn on a motorcycle. I've always been a big proponent of helmets and generally I wear full face helmets. On occasion, I do have a half helmet. I usually wear that after I do work on a motorcycle and take it out and uh, ride around and, and make sure it's running right I'm in the neighborhood only. And then whenever I go back on the highway, full face it is. The, of course, having the neck area as well, you also want to make sure that you have a good um, jacket that has a rigidity in the shoulders and also maybe the back plate and some other things that help keep your neck from snapping as easily when you fall because some of those jackets are designed to catch the helmet to make sure your head stays pretty rigid whenever you go down so you don't snap and that keeps the neck injuries down. The next part is the upper trunk. So whenever you are riding and you hit something and you might go forward, you might cut, clip those handlebars or you might fall straight to it, especially a high side. A lot of the times you dive pretty much head first. Some people manage to bend up and they take the impact straight into the chest. So you want some protection there. There's under the jacket armor for that. It's kind of like a roost guard if you're familiar with dirt racing and, and dirt biking and, and off-road and everything. It's something that catches that impact from the upper trunk so if you hit the handlebars or if you dive into the road straight in at 30 miles an hour it absorbs that impact for you and that way it deflects and you're good to go your next area is going to be your arm and head and that's because a lot of the times when we fall we're trying to catch ourselves so we're spreading our arms out 
and we're catching and then we might tap on the forward or as we're falling, we'll have our arm out. We might tap like that. And you wanna make sure that the jacket that you're wearing is extremely abrasion resistant in those arms. You wanna make sure you have elbow pads, shoulder pads, and also, you know, like I said, some of them, they have those abilities to keep that helmet because it catches the chin from being snapped and, you know, keep your head off the ground a little bit easier if you have that rigidity in the armor. After that, you're going to actually have just kind of your lower trunk. The abdomen area is only 8%, and that's mostly because we're already curled up and we're pretty much protecting that area. 3% is other just random things that may happen in other areas of your body. But for the most part, when you think about when you fall, your leg is going to be the most likely to catch, followed by the upper portion, especially depending on low slide, which is going to be mostly your leg and lower, or high side, which is going to be your upper trunk and head and neck and arms. So you're looking at the kind of accident. And to be honest, uh, as a motorcycle rider, it is not if you fall, it is when you fall. And I get that there's many of you out there that can state, I have rode for 50 years and have never once fallen on a motorcycle. Well, congratulations you still got plenty of time if you're still riding. But if you never do, that's awesome, good job. <laughs> but the thing is, sometimes you cannot anticipate what people are doing around you. For me, I've actually been hit, or possibly hit, twice. Now, one was for sure, one I still debate to this day. I was actually out riding to work on my Z125 Pro a few years ago, and uh, I noticed in the left lane that there was a ton of oil, and I knew that I needed to be out of that lane because the bike would not uh, be able to go through it without sliding. Well, I got over to the right lane and out of the blue and out of a blind intersection, I could not see beyond the tree. Um, basically, here comes this blue Hyundai lady painting her face on for the morning. And when she came out, she was right here. There's nothing I could do. I couldn't brake or I'd still be hit. I couldn't speed up or I'd still be hit. I was in the wrong position at all. And of course, it's a Z125 Pro. Speeding up is not an option. You're not gonna really get that much faster. So I had such a bad angle, the only thing I could do was go back to that left lane and hope that the oil wasn't quite in that area like I thought it was. And it definitely was. We'll go through those pictures here and you can see where my jeans and everything took that now notice I wasn't wearing a jacket and that's the time my eyes opened. And I started wearing a jacket no matter what. And it started simple. It started actually out, because it's 100 degrees in Oklahoma, it started with this mesh jacket here uh, that I got whenever I was working at the Harley dealership. But still, it's designed of an anti-abrasive, anti-slide um, material. So that way if I fall, at least I won't have the road rash like I had before. Now the one thing was, I still don't know to this day if my wheel was actually tapped that caused the low slide or if it was the oil that just kicked me over. That's one thing I'll never know. The guy behind me that saw it all said I was tapped. Um, I never heard anything that said that. I just went for a nice little slide. The good thing was, yes, I honked. Yes, I slowed down. Yes, I did everything. Yes, she kept going. He followed her, couldn't catch up to her because he missed the light cycles. He said he got her license plate. The only thing that happened was the tree was trimmed and the intersection was no longer blind. So that's the only thing that happened out of that whole thing from what I know. But the whole thing was, it still opened my eyes. I was wearing gloves, wearing a helmet, wearing jeans, but I was not wearing a jacket and I got all the injury on the arm. And uh, that's one thing that I didn't want to have repeat, so I started with that. The next time was a little bit different. I was sitting at a stoplight, and this time I maintained the bike on its two wheels. I was actually rear-ended on the little Honda Rebel I used to have, and unfortunately it destroyed the license plate, didn't destroy the bike, um, but it was a lesson. Uh, it was a lesson for the driver to put the phone down. It was a lesson for me also that it's good to have gear at all times, because you just don't know. Even though it was a light little accident, you know, and everything was fine, the bike was fine, I went home and adjusted the chain back and made sure it was in alignment, it was reinspected. everything was good, they didn't find anything wrong, and all I did was tell her, hey, make sure you put the phone down next time and watch out for us, and I was really nice about it. You'll find out that I'm just a good old country boy, and I don't get riled up about much anything. So, if I do, <laughs> it's usually major, but even then, most of the time, I'm pretty calm about it. I just walk up and I'll give you some sort of 
uh, you know, a little quip and be done with it. It's how I generally run. But being in that situation twice, I know that it can happen to anybody. I know that it can happen at any time, in any place. So let's talk about the biggest safety part of motorcycling, and that is the helmet. So let's grab a helmet real quick and we'll go over everything on that. All right, so when it comes to helmets, you make sure that you get a good one. Minimum standard for helmets is gonna be DOT, and that stands for the US Department of Transportation. That's the standard safety uh, matrix of a helmet. Now the thing is the DOT regulation has been around since the 70s. A lot has changed since the 70s, guys. So we know that even though it's a safety standard, it may not be the safest safety standard there is. Of course, there's been other ones that have come up. There's Snell, F1M, and some others that are coming into play that are even more safer. And of course, different countries have different regulations as well. So you want a helmet that fits at least your country's recommended level of safety. If you can get beyond that, get beyond that. You want to protect your head. You definitely do, and this is the helmet I'm actually using now. This is a Scorpion uh, EXO R2000 helmet. It is a composite helmet, so it's actually a very light helmet. It's not very heavy at all. You can kind of see around it. This is actually DOT certified. It is FMVSS certified, and it's a Snell certified helmet as well. And that means it has been tested uh, even further than DOT standard and has come up with that. Now here's the thing about your Snell foundation. As soon as you add anything to it, these communicators or your GoPro mounts or anything like that, you have completely negated your Snell standard because Snell standard is how it reacts in slides and impacts. And if you have something blocking that slide mechanism, so if I go down on that and that doesn't rip away very easily, it will rip my head even easier. Same with this. So you remember, whenever you modify your helmet, you may be actually downgrading your safety standard. It's something that I do understand as well. Now, when it comes to it, you wanna make sure that you are replacing your helmet every three to five years. The EPS inside these things, it's the foam that's on the top end of this, actually gives out over time. Uh, basically through heat, through cold, through your sweat, through everything breaking it down, eventually it is no longer as safe as it once was when it came off the floor. So when it comes to helmets, you wanna make sure that it as fits nice and snug for you. I'll go ahead and throw this one on real quick. I know I've got my dark shade on right now, but whenever you put it on, you wanna make sure that it fits nice and snug. You wanna put your fingers up here where you can get just barely the tip in there, but nothing else. You wanna make sure that when you're wearing it, as you can see, it grabs the forehead and moves it around, but it still fits nice and comfortably. You wanna make sure you have your D-rings completely put into place and strap out of the way. So you wanna make sure that the helmet is fully on there. And that way, if you hit, it doesn't pop off. It doesn't do anything. It stays on your head the whole time. Now, a good motorcycle helmet is not only gonna have those certifications, but it's gonna also have vents. As you'll see, there's vents everywhere and also the good shape too. You wanna to find a helmet that can handle the wind and everything. Cause it's good to have not only a safe helmet, it's good to have good wind as well because when your head's going through the wind and it's a bad design, this is kind of distracting when you're riding. But if it's a good design, if it has good flow and it has good venting, then the air just travels right around it and you're sitting there solid as a rock and you don't really feel the helmet. A lot of people might complain about the visibility and stuff, but to be honest, I don't have any control or any loss of visibility, I should say, on any of these sides through the ear and through this area. I can't see as down as much because of the front chin bar, but other than that, I do not have poor visibility out of this helmet whatsoever. So having a good helmet that's up to date, that is meeting the safety standards is a great thing to have. And there's different composites, there's carbon, there's composite like this, there's plastics, there's different things. The cheaper the helmet, generally the heavier the helmet because it's being made of materials that don't absorb the impact as well, so they have to have more of it, so it makes it heavy. Uh, then if you get up into the price range, you can end up with a good helmet like this one um, that is light, cuts through the air, 
breathes perfectly. It's a great helmet. It's one the best helmet I've had so far, uh, for sure. And I've been an HJC guy for a long time, but uh, going with this Scorpion has changed my life, basically. So having a good helmet that goes through the air just fine, that has all the safety standards, that's lightweight, uh, that that you're keeping up to date, that you're not modifying. You don't want to modify that in any way. You don't want to go in there and cut foam out or anything. That's all designed uh, in the event of the impact. When it crashes, the EPS takes that and pushes it around the shell. So when you hit something, everything is going around, keeping it away from your head. And if you cut any of that out, that has a place where it will fail uh, in terms of getting it all around your head and therefore you might sustain or sustain an injury that you weren't anticipating. So whenever you get something like that, make sure you don't modify it. I know that this one is not designed for communicators. Um, it really it just had to form into my head. I did not push in on anything. I just had to deal with it pushing it on my head for a little bit. Now that's broke in, the, the speakers are in there okay, but Sometimes in some cases you don't want to buy a racing type helmet like I did to put a communicator in but because of the channel because of the way I ride with friends I have to have a communicator in at all time that way I can I can communicate and we can continue to do what we do uh, but I you know like I said it's been a great helmet uh, the cool thing is it's also got uh, cheek pads that will form to you with air and some other things. Those are some cool features that you can pick up in certain helmets. Some of them, they just grab onto your type. And they all come in different shell sizes and different shapes too. So make sure that if you have elongated oval head or a big round head, make sure you find a shell that matches that because you don't want something that fits fine up here but then grabs your face and just like does that to you like a showy or an awry does to me. They just don't have the right face shape for me. So I've always found, you know, HJC now Scorpion has the best face shaping for me, but always find a helmet that works for you, that fits nice and snug up here, that grabs onto your cheeks, but doesn't like smash you. And remember the first few times you wear your helmet, it is going to be a little uncomfortable because it's going to be a little bit tighter. It does form to your head over time and it becomes your helmet. And like I said, keep flopping them out every three to five years due to that EPS breakdown, or if you have any impact whatsoever on that helmet, or if you drop it more than four feet. If you do any of those things, if you take an impact, which I've actually lost a couple of helmets due to impacts um, from riding in a piece of debris shattered something or something, um, you definitely need to replace at that point because it's no longer as safe. And if it drops, that EPS has solidified because it bounced, it, it absorbed, it did what it's supposed to do. Unfortunately, your head wasn't in it and you just ruined your helmet, so don't drop your helmet. Uh, but point is, you drop it, any damage, uh, three to five years, make sure you're replacing the helmet and that way you're keeping your noggin safe. So let's talk about the next portion, your body. So when it comes to protecting your upper body, most of the time it's going to come in the form of a jacket. Now, some things I don't own is going to be like the chest protector or roost guards or some of those. Uh, some people have a whole thing that they've uh, put on under that has armor in different areas. It's like a, an additional little jacket and then they can put their jacket over it. Those things I don't own as I'm not that aggressive of a rider and it's something that is a little bit more expensive, but it's something I'll look into in the future. I'm mostly a cruiser, guys. Most of you all know I don't really ride the R6s or the uh, leader bikes or any of those, even though I'll do them for reviews every once in a while. I generally stick to cruising. So when it comes down to it, the, the basic layer of protection that I had before was something like this HD mesh jacket. And like I said, it was basic. You could put some CE level armor into the uh, shoulder here and the elbows, but nothing for the back whatsoever. Uh, and the shoulder armor and stuff that they put for these is worthless in my opinion. It's very thin, it's not very rigid, uh, it is no good. So the thing that happened over time is I've learned more and more about gear and other things. And to be honest, I'm very thankful 
for AGV Sport USA. This is where I'll have to tell you guys that yes, they have actually started to sponsor our channel. So they have actually sent us some gear that we can have, that we can use, that we can talk about with you guys. And I'm telling you, I've been using the gear now for a couple of weeks to give it a good test run before I, I start speaking about it. And might as well get a good talk about gear with the gear that we've got. So like I said, I started with the mesh at first, but now I've kind of switched over to this. This is a uh, flannel type. It's called the James Flannel. And the one thing I love about this thing is that it's just as breathable as the mesh, but it actually has CE level two backplate in it, along with shoulder, along with elbow. Nice CE level two softer armor. So it's kind of like D30 if you've ever used that stuff before where it's flexible and soft until you hit it, it hardens. And that's exactly how this stuff works. It's a really nice armor plate in it. And it's good to have, because like I said, you want to have something to keep your head from uh, you know, snapping back as hard. You want to have something that can impact protect for your back for your shoulders, for your elbows and everything. And you wanna remain cool as well. So when you're out there, it's good to have something like this. And a nice thing about this too, is it's made of abrasion resistant fabrics. It has Kevlar in it. And you know, it has some nylon and stuff as well. It's, it's just as abrasion resistant and slide resistant as the, actually probably a little bit more so do the Kevlar than the mesh jacket that I had before. So this is what I'm using for summertime. And there's gonna be different levels of coats and things that you use. Most people will know I have an Alpine Star Megaton that I've been using as well that actually has, uh, it has basically foam here, impact plates here, a back plate, shoulder, elbow, elbow comes down to here. So that is my most heavily armored jacket, but it is used pretty much exclusively for cold weather because that thing, even with everything out of it, all the liners and everything, it's hot. And in Oklahoma, it gets hot. So having a, a flannel like the James flannel is perfect. It's a great riding coat. The way it fits, it's cut perfectly. It fits on there just fine. It's a great deal. Another thing too, say that you're out there and you're adventure riding. You're gonna have a jacket that's gonna be a little bit more built up. This is the Flex AGV jacket. So you'll see that you have vents here, you have vents here, there's vents that pop open here as well. Plenty of venting because adventure riders ride most of the time in many different climates and many different seasons, so they have to change out a ton of times. So that's the whole thing is like I said, you wanna have something that is changeable. So you'll see that you do have liners in here, so you can remove the liner, you can get more airflow, as you go through, if you can change your elevation, go into the mountains or anything like that. That's why a lot of AG or a lot of uh, adventure riders are going to have a jacket like this. It's going to be able to vent out, close up, be able to be water resistant or proof. This one's water resistant. This one's going to have the liner for your cold. It's going to have a catch for your uh, jeans or a zipper if you want to zip into your pants so that way it doesn't ride up on you. Uh, the flannel does as well. It's something else of motorcycle clothes you don't think about when you're riding. You don't want to ride up or slide away from your body when you're sliding so you have hooks uh, that can go into your belts or go into your pants if you got the zipper type and that way when you're sliding It doesn't ride up on you and now your back's exposed and it's getting nice road rash and everything You want to have something like this hook Or like this zipper to go into your pants and that way that does not happen Of course it saves the embarrassment of riding and catching the wind and uh, giving everybody a show behind you because some people don't appreciate that so this is the same thing. It has that CE2 back plate in it. It has the shoulders. It has also the elbows as well. This is, has a Cordura fabric and it also has abrasion resistant slide panels in it in different spots in the more high impact areas. So on the sleeves and on the shoulders and on the back, it has the bigger panels for slide resistance. And that's something you wanna look for in a textile jacket. You wanna have the materials that are able to go through and slide and resist the abrasion because anything that's just cotton, anything that's just a shirt is not going to last more than a second and you're gonna be road rashing in no time. You're gonna catch yourself with a hoodie and it's gonna also do something else too. These are designed to slide. 
a hoodie is not. So it can actually catch stuff and not only just a bra or go away, it can also catch and then rip away. And that can also rip your arm back too, depending on how strong stitching is and stuff like that. And that could cause more injury as well. So you want to have a jacket that slides and is abrasion resistant. You don't want anything that can catch on anything. It'd be a bummer if your if your hoodie, like the pocket or something like that, that's not closed up, catches your handlebar, and that's going to be a great day when you wreck on that one. So, like I said, you want to be appropriate on the top half of your body as well, depending on your riding conditions. Like I said, if it's hot, you can have a flannel or a mesh. If it's, you know, multiple different occasions, you can have a nice textile jacket with removable liners, and that way you can adjust the conditions and also open vents, have venting and everything, and then close them up immediately when you need to. Uh, also, the tried and true, like the Polymar here, this is the Polymar leather. Tried and true, this one does have a liner, it is out right now. Uh, cause I've been riding with it actually in the summer to test it out. And I have to say, I'm actually impressed. This is the first leather jacket. I don't completely crisp up and bake in, uh, whenever I am riding, this does get hot though, when you're sitting still, but if you're riding, there's some very good open panels in here and on the chest to keep you going. And it's a very good jacket. It's made of Buffalo. This is going to be a very good slide resistant. Uh, jacket leather is generally um, for, you know, seen as the most abrasion and slide resistant material there is. So if it's designed right, this has of course leather and nylon, a little bit of ballistic type materials, also carrying that CE2 armor here, back, elbows as well. So it's a jacket designed with that in mind, in that safety. You can see there, and like I said, this one is great for uh, kind of your fall, winter, some summer. Um, I mean, it's been 90 plus already, and as long as you're moving, it actually has very good airflow. Uh, you know, and this is going to be more of a water resistant type. It won't repel water for, you know, long and forever, but there's other things that you can have for that. Let me show you some of that as well. So you're out there and you hear a little bit of a rumble and see some lightning in the distance and some other horrible signs that you're about to hit rain. Well, in some cases, most of us don't ride in fully protective gear that's fully waterproof at all times. Uh, most of our stuff might be water resistant, some of it might be waterproof, but not fully together. So in that case, what I have is a Nielsen Riggs rain suit. And you'll notice it's nice bright orange. And that's another thing about gear you wanna have is to have visibility. Now this one has visibility panels as well. All the other AGV uh, stuff I showed you with the exception of the flannel does have those stripes as well. So that way it promotes uh, retro reflectivity and that way people can see you easier. But you definitely wanna have something like this that you can throw over in a hurry because this can go over my jackets. This can go over whatever I'm wearing at that time as well as the pants as well. They have a little striping as well for visibility. These pants can go over anything that I'm wearing at the time. And you'll notice that they have a zipper and a very large opening and a boot strap to hold on to. So you want to also have the little boot coverings as well because most of the time our boots are not waterproof either. And that way you keep warm and dry while you're out riding. So you want to have a good rain suit to go with the good protective gear. Most rain suits are not gonna be fully protective. As you can see, it's just a thin, water resistant nylon with no padding whatsoever, no armor parts, no nothing, just water resistant. The next thing is your hands. One thing I've never been without is gloves. And that's because the hide on your hand takes forever to heal if something happens. So you wanna have a good glove to go over your hand. Now for winter and for rain, these are generally the two gloves I go to, an Icon Patrol that I have here, and this is a Joe Rocket um, heated glove for extreme winter. Both of the, these are Hypora, and they're both, of course, a gauntlet style glove. So they go over your jacket entrance and everything like that, seal it up to keep the water from intruding in there. Now I will say though, when it comes to Hypora, Hypora might as well just be called water resistant. Uh, it will last for a while, but at a point it will fail. 
And both of these are Hapora and both of them in rain after so much time, especially the thunderstorms we have here, my hands do start to get wet. Uh, you can also add inner liners and some other things to help keep you warmer while you're riding. Like I said, those are warm gloves, so I actually have heaters in those on the Rockets, not the Patrol. They're just a standard glove, uh, but they do help keep you warm in the winter. You want a heavy overbuilt glove. The next thing is the palm. What's it made out of? Is it a leather? Is it, um, you know, a nylon, a slide resistive, um, impact resistant type material? These particular ones are only kind of a leather uh, slide point and landing point, no additional padding. But the glove that I have for uh, more all weather riding, uh, more warmer condition is gonna be this AGV Mayhem, AGV Sport Mayhem glove that they sent me that replaces the old Alpine Stars that I've had for a long time that were CE level one. These are the same way. They have an impact part on the palm nice um, impact resistant slides on it. I like the fact that it has a knuckle guard on it and it also has of course vents through here to help cool the hand during the summer. It also of course has impact parts on your knuckles and your fingers and everything. Now some jurisdictions require over the wrist. This will allow that um, but also it is not a full gauntlet style glove but it does at least get over the wrist and most of the time it sits under my jacket actually nicely so there's no exposed point of skin, but it's a nice hybridized glove of mesh, of race, and of impact resistant. And you can hear that thing takes a good impact. Can't even feel that going through the hand. So that's one thing you wanna look for in gloves is something that will protect the hind on your hand and the impact and everything because those can get hurt when you crash as well because most of the time you're putting your hands out or you're doing something that can cause you to hit those and slide on them. And like I said, if you get those injured, it takes forever for a hand to heal. So now let's talk about the legs real fast and let's talk about the types of materials that you want there. So now we're moving on to the portion of the most amount of injury you're going to get while in a motorcycle crash, and that is going to be the legs and feet. So the big thing is jeans are not going to cut it. They do not survive more than any second, especially at highway speeds. They're not going to make it. Uh, they will last less than a second. You'll have a terrible case of road rash, and you're going to walk away if you walk away feeling kind of in a bad day. So that's why you get jeans that are designed for it. And these are the AGV Metro jeans turned inside out to show you what motorcycle jeans are about. Notice it has a moisture wicking material in the middle here. And the cool thing is, is that in the seat and in the knees, the high impact areas that you'll notice that there is going to be Kevlar in those areas. And that way it helps uh, from poking or slide abrasion or anything like that. So as you're going down the road in the high impact areas, it will actually um, take that slide for you. And that way you're not gonna end up with road rash in your seat or your leg or thigh in that knee area where you're gonna slide the most. They look like normal everyday jeans whenever you see them outside. And like I said, a lot of motorcycle stuff, it's designed for us. You notice that moisture wicking in there, these jackets, helmets, all that has that moisture wicking to help keep you cool and to keep that moisture away from you. But you want something like this. You want this as your minimum protection, not a pair of jeans, like I said before. Like I said, that's the bare absolute minimum. Please buy a pair of good riding jeans if you can as your minimum. As you step up in range, you can get some that have uh, padding and other protection up at the top and also knee plates as well. So you can move up to those as well if you wanted to. Uh, you also have another example. These are the Mojave pants. These are the wife's. Those were the wife's as well. I kind of got my other pants in a big muddy mess. You'll see my boot in a moment, but um, yeah, it's been raining here quite a bit, but you'll see that on these, these are kind of an ADV style or adventure ride. This does have indeed the uh, padding and the stuff in the knee. Uh, it does not have it in the waist, but like I said, some do. This has an inner liner in it. 
You can see that moisture wick type again, just like on the uh, other stuff. It also has this in there as well. As you can see a mesh moisture wicking and of course waterproofing on these pants. Most ADV pants are going to be waterproof or resistant. Um, water resistance at a minimum, but these are going to be waterproof with an inner liner. So it's basically got that inner wet liner, inner cold liner. Also, as stated before, you want to make sure that your pants have a way to attach. You can see the zipper there so you can attach it to your jacket so when you're sliding it doesn't pull away or when you're riding it doesn't ride up on you it just sits there and and works the way it's supposed to same thing it's going to have higher impact type fabrics you'll see double stitchings here where they added more protection in the layers for sliding same here you see the layers of protection there there's different ways that they cross it in there so that way you have more layers of slide in your seat, your thigh, and your knee area where you're gonna take most of it. A lot of people leave this alone because that's where that boot comes in play, where you want that over the ankle boot. But these pants, like I said, they're gonna be waterproof, they're gonna be cold proof as best as it can, depending on how well you handle cold. But ADV pants are designed in that way, once again, for those people that are out there a long time in the saddle and they're constantly needing to change how they're riding, if it's hot or cold or whatnot. This does have vents as well. You'll see these little um, magnetic spots that you unzip and then you'll pull the magnet up and it will actually have a vent there as well. So it helps keep you cool. Once again, that's what motorcycle clothes do for us is it helps keep us cool. It helps keep us in the mode to ride and able to take the slide so we don't sled as bad as implied. And last but not least, and like I said, I apologize for this mess, but it's been raining here and I ride in the rain, <laughs> so it gets muddy. You want a good over the ankle boot. This is a tactical type boot. This is not necessarily built as a motorcycle boot, but it actually has a lot of the different things that motorcycle boots have. It has a nice stiff leather upper that continues to hold on to the ankle as you bend and stuff. So if you fall, it doesn't just give out like a cowboy boot. It doesn't um, fold over like a tennis shoe does. It actually holds up very well. It's padded as well. So when I take impacts and stuff to the, um, to the calf region, to the ankle region, it just deflects off. It also has the leather right there over the ankles and stuff. So this is what you're looking for. You're also looking for a boot oil resistant and slick resistant re style um, rubber soles. You do not want to wear cowboy boots with leather soles out on the road because that first oil patch you hit, <laughs> you're gonna be holding onto your bike with your leg because you're gonna go right down. So you definitely wanna have something that's slick resistant, oil resistant. Um, this is basically what you're looking for in a motorcycle boot, over the ankle, armored in some way, uh, very very rigid type boot like I said easy in and out because it has the zipper We'll make sure that the laces are tucked in or tied in a way that they're tucked in and don't get into anything on the bike So that's how we as riders stay safe um, From all the cagers out there who don't pay attention to us who don't Understand what we're out there about we're out there wanting to enjoy freedom and a good mind clearing ride in the wind where they just don't give a flying flip. So make sure you're wearing the right gear. Make sure that you're doing the right thing. Make sure you're doing everything as a rider to avoid anything because you have a lot in that accident too if it's coming up. As a rider, keep your rider radar going. Search far, near, and side to side. Always keep searching. Always keep seeing. Search, evaluate, and execute around you. And that way your rider radar is fine tuned. And that way, if there is an accident, kind of like mine, mine were both very, very minor. They're both kind of unavoidable because when you're sitting still and somebody rear ends you, you can see them coming. But when you're the first in line and you got somebody turning over your bow, you can't really just take off and get away from them. But you can at least anticipate it and start the process of negating any damage or any hurt to you. Uh, same with the other one, even though I didn't really see them until they pulled out, I was still able to mostly slow down. I was still able to find a, an escape route to uh, you know, avoid any major injury or damage to the bike. It turned out $30 worth of damage to the bike in the long run. So the point is good gear, don't get yourself hurt, keep watching, 
and be safe during this motorcycle season. At any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog. Once again, thank you AGV Sport USA for sponsoring our channel and sending us the great gear. We're gonna be making more in detailed and in-depth videos about this gear in the future uh, as we ride with it, as we get to know it, so that way we can pass that knowledge on to you folks. At any rate, keep that shiny side up and we'll catch you on the next ride. What's up everybody? This is the Rabbit Hedgehog. We once again want to thank you for watching our videos. Please like, share, subscribe today, and if you like what you see, mash that notification button so that way you get our latest videos and notifications live and on the spot. We also want to thank our dealership partners, Indian of Oklahoma City, House of Kawasaki, and Motive Cycle Works Moto Guzzi, who is also our motorcycle mechanic. We want to thank them for allowing us to ride their rides. We are not paid in by any way by any manufacturer or dealer. We just get to be mad men and women with opinions. We also want to reach out to our sponsors and thank them. We have Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers. These motorcycle lawyers are mostly nationwide and can be reached 24-7 at lawtigers.com or one 868 208 We also want to thank our newest sponsor for gear and the things that you see us wearing, AGV Sport USA. They are out of agvsportusa.com in Flower Mound, Texas. We also want to thank Doug Crawford and AMS Oil for protecting our machines with the latest in lubrication technologies. He can be found at usasynthetics.com or 405-388-6170. And also for Derek Inlow and Associates Insurance Company, he can be found at 405-261-1010. Once again, everybody keep that shiny side up and we'll catch you on the next ride.